Hey everyone. Hi, hi. Hi, hey everyone. Hi, Alvin. Hi, Atari. Hi, Charles. Hi, Derek. Hi, Chu. Hi, Gary. Hi, Claire. Hi, Henry. Hi, John. Hi, York. There's a long list. This is a long list. So, hey everyone. Hi, Richard. Okay, hey. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. I'm just gonna keep saying hi to everyone until everyone else, the rest settles in because I do still see people coming in. Oh, hey, Desiree. Desiree, your name is under David today. Hey, Robert. Okay, there's still more of you joining. Let's just give the rest a little bit more time to settle in. Oh, nice. Hey, Alvin. Hey, Robert. Hey, Gliard. Gliard? Hey, D. Okay. Um, oh. Okay, I, I think the Desmond, right? <laughs> I'm just getting this now. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, hey everyone, welcome to our webinar today. Um, we've got Tick Mills. We're doing the Master Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. We're gonna be talking about Ichimoku today, which is one of my favorite indicators. It's the first indicator I learned when I just started trading. So I'm super excited to be sharing or uh, teaching you guys about Ichimoku today. Hey, Gary. Okay, uh, I just want to double check. I'm sure everyone can hear me because everyone's like saying hi and responding to me. Everyone can see my screen, right? Just want to double check because I don't want to go on and I'll need to find out that the screen is stuck. Okay, cool. So, hey, Kay, thank you, thank you, thank you for answering. Okay. Okay, without further ado, let's start. Uh, again, today's topic, Ichimoku. Hi, hi. Okay. Um, so, hey, everyone. For those who don't know me, I mean, you guys wouldn't know me other than Desiree because it's my first time taking you guys here on Take Mail. My name is Cassandra. I am from Everest Fortune Group. I'm so it's usually Des that takes you guys, but it will be me today. I do still see people joining. This attendance list is still increasing. So I hope those that are, those who just join, uh, I hope you settle in and you're ready to learn today. Okay, uh, my name is Cassandra. You guys can call me Cass. I am an investment analyst and a prop trader here at Evans Fortune Group. We are a fintech company in Singapore. Okay, uh, we are the finalists for Best Forex Research and Best Equity Research from 2019 up to 2021. 2022, the results are not out yet, so we are not, we're, we haven't put that in. So what we do is we do a lot of research and we kind of forecast where the markets are going. Let me adjust this camera. Am I still cut off now? Okay. Okay, so what we do here at Everest Fortune Group is we spend a lot of time researching and advising brokerages, banks, and a lot of institutions of where we think the markets are going. And today we have a special partnership with uh, TickMill to bring you guys these webinars so that we can ultimately all improve in trading and hopefully grow our accounts as well. Okay, 
So if you guys are new here, um, especially those who are beginners are just learning how to trade, don't be shy. Do ask questions throughout the webinars. Just remember this. Just remember that uh, Tickmill prepared these webinars for you guys so that you guys can ultimately improve in your trading and again grow your account. So don't be shy to ask any questions. We're all here to learn, okay? And to grow as traders. Okay, so our agenda for today. In today's session, we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to be breaking down what Ichimoku is, Ichimoku Kinko Kyo, okay, the effective tools to combine with Ichimoku and playing the continuations and playing the reversals with Ichimoku, okay? Also, before I proceed with the webinar, I just want to do a little disclaimer to remind you guys that whatever um, I share in this webinar should only only be taken as educational and should not be construed as trading advice. Okay, sorry about that. I might have missed that. Yes, it's here. The front page of the start of our webinar should have started with that. Okay, the disclaimer, everything should be educational. Please just take this as a sharing and learning session. Okay, um, just a little risk warning, trading Forex and CFDs, especially if you are trading on margin, carries significant uh, risk, right? And it's not suitable for everyone. And this is not, we're not doing this to scare you guys, but more to remind you guys that there is risk and you should always learn um, the proper skills before you do anything. So I'm glad you guys are here today so that you can properly learn how the basics before you actually jump in. To trading okay so let's do let's start with breaking down with Ichi, breaking down ichimoku okay can i just find out from you guys if you guys have ever used ichimoku before how many of you here have used ichimoku or have heard of ichimoku or maybe like this is your first time okay yes yes a bit uh never heard of it before Never heard of it. There's so many of you have never heard of it. Okay, John Cole, very generically, but not continent. Overclock is as a direction. Okay, that's good. That's a good start, uh, Chan. Uh, heard of it, but never use it. Okay, uh, for those who have never heard of it, Mafeno have never, nope, never hardly use it. Never Lenovo. The Nova Tab M7, I'm, just, I'm assuming someone's using their tab here. Yeah. Yes, no. Okay, I think we've got mixed answers uh, coming in. Majority of you have never even heard of Ichimoku. And I think, okay, uh, Ichimoku is a really, really good indicator. It's, it's an amazing indicator. Uh, I'm glad we can learn it. For those who have never heard of it, for those who are already using it, I hope you are getting the, like, benefiting from it as much as I did or I am still benefiting from it, okay? Um, right, but again, if you guys have questions. Oh, okay, guys, um, to everyone, for those who are replying, I do see some of you replying to like uh, just the host of panelists. Uh, I do encourage you guys to reply to everyone so that we can learn is Cassandra married to Desmond? No, no, no. Des has his own wife. <laughs> no, Des and I are not married, okay? <laughs> uh, thanks for that, RR. <laughs> yes, please share your answers with everyone so that we can learn and grow together as traders and chartists. Okay, so let's break out what Ichimoku is. So Ichimoku was developed by Gyochi So Hosoda. Okay, guys, um, where is Desmond? People stop being personal now. Desmond is here in the chat as well. He's actually under D. So you guys can still... Wait, you are Desmond Young on your video. Oh, I am Desmond Young on my video. Oh, right. Okay. Because this is our main, the same account that we use. Sorry about that. Didn't, 
I forgot to change the name, but no, I'm not Desmond, I am Cassandra. Yes, let's focus on the class, folks. Okay, so I just, uh, before I continue, I just want to remind those who are new here, whatever I'm going to, because this is a, uh, today's webinar is topical, right? Uh, it's very, it can be quite theoretical or very principle-based, okay? So if you don't understand, it's totally fine. The most important things, if like, like you don't remember the history of today, like I just said, Ichimo Cloud was developed by Goichi Hosoda. If you don't remember this, um, it's, I don't, I mean, it, I think it's good to know, right? But it's not that important. More importantly is the application. You need to know how to apply Ichimoku into trading and into your charts, right? So later on, we will move on. We will talk, we'll see, sorry. We'll see a bit of the examples of how you can use Ichimoku. And if we have time, we can move on to the live charts where we see like live examples of how uh, Ichimoku worked really well in the near, in the, in the past or like recently. Okay. So if you are a bit lost and you don't remember any of the principle, all the theoretical stuff I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Again, it's just good to know, not really that important. More importantly is the application. Okay. So again, developed by Goichi Hosoda is, he was a Japanese uh, journalist and he, he published the Ichimoku indicator in the 1960s. So it's been around for about 60 years now. Um, it, the whole point of the Ichimoku is to provide more data points than the standard candlestick chart, okay? It may seem a little complicated at first, but once we break down how it works, it's actually not that hard. Also, we're gonna be going through some of the lines and I know for those that, I seeing this for the first time, you're, you're just like, what does all these lines mean? Don't worry, we'll break down, we'll go through every one of them, okay? So let's start with the conversion line and the baseline. So because this indicator was um, introduced in Japan, right? Was introduced in Japan, they actually have Japanese names, which uh, is not important. We can just use the English names, which is on trading view. So conversion line, uh, the Japanese name for it is like Tenken Sen. That, don't worry if you don't remember it. I personally don't even remember it sometimes, but I remember the English name, right? And I remember the English name. Oh, sorry. Okay, right? So this, to make it even easier for everyone, how I remember it is when I see the blue line, okay, because this is the default settings in TradingView. When you see, when you pull out the Ichimoku indicator on TradingView, right, uh, you will see all these lines. You see this blue line, this red line, that a few green lines that is not in this picture right here, right? Um, you just have to remember that the blue line is the conversion line, okay, or Tenken Sen. And the red line is the, ba the baseline, which is the Kijun Sen. Okay, so basically, if you don't remember anything I say, the only thing that you should take away from this webinar, not the only thing, but some of the important things that you should take away from this webinar is that when the blue line is below the red line, it means that Ichimoku is signaling some kind of bearishness, okay? Ichimoku is signaling bearishness, okay? So when the blue line is above the red line, Ichimoku is signaling bullishness, okay? Is everyone good for now? That's the first key takeaway you should remember from this webinar. If you don't remember anything else, at least remember this. Blue line, Below the red line is bearish, means that it's on a downtrend. Blue line above the red line means it's bullish, it's on a uptrend. Okay? Okay, cool. Okay, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the lagging span. Uh, so the lagging span is basically this line that is, well, on trading view, the default color is this dark blue, right? So when you see this dark blue, it's a lagging span, it's basically the line that is behind current price by uh, the input that you put. So usually with Ichimoku, it is put 26 days, okay? So the reason why um, 
it's 20, the default settings in TradingView is 26 days. It's because back then in Japan, uh, trading days was not uh, five days, right? It was six days. So 26 was actually 26 trading days in a month. That's why when you go to trading view and you, you pull out Ichimoku, you see the numbers are like the default settings are different. It, it's 6, 26, um, yeah, it's 6 and 26. So 6 is because it's 6 trading days and 26 is because it's 26 trading days in a month. So 6 trading days in a week, 26 trading days in a month. But now in today's time, um, trading days are actually five days. So it's actually Monday to Fridays and close on the weekend. So even though the trading days are five days now, we still use the default settings. Here at Everest, we still use the default settings because the, we find that the default settings are still effective, right? They're still effective. So certain indicators, we do manually change the default settings from TradingView because we find that those default settings are not effective to our strategy. But with Ichimoku, you can use the default settings that TradingView gives you, okay? Because it is still effective. Okay, uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the leading span A, okay. Um, the leading span A is called the Senko span A and the leading span B is called the Senko span B. So leading span A, uh, it takes the average of the Tengen Sen and the Kijun Sen plotted 26 periods ahead of the current price action, okay. Don't worry if you don't remember that. Again, it's application. <laughs> okay, now we've got the leading span B, which is called the Senko span B. It averages the highest high and the lowest low taken over the past 52 time periods and then plotted 26 periods ahead. Okay. Is anyone lost as of now? Everyone good? Okay, cool. Everyone seems to be okay. Okay, so this is what the leading span A and leading span B looks like. And the last thing we have, not okay. Um, do you have a question <laughs> that you need help with? What about the parameters? Hey, Salvador, what do you mean by parameters? Okay. Um, while waiting for you to answer, I'm just gonna talk about the cloud first. So the last thing in trading view that you will see is called the plot background. Okay, the plot, plot background is very, very important when you're using the Ichimoku. It's basically the cloud when, when you're using the Ichimoku cloud indicator, right? So it is the, the cloud and it's very important. Um, this cloud works as a form of support and resistance. Okay, so let me just grab my pen so that I can show you guys, right? Whenever price breaks this cloud, it means that it has recently broken the Ichimoku resistance, okay? And when it has broken the cloud to the downside, it means that it's broken the Ichimoku support, okay? So it's just a form of support and resistance. Anytime it's within the cloud, it's price is a little neutral, okay? And anytime it is broken, it just means that broken the support resistance. Um, the other thing you want to take note of with the cloud is the thickness of the cloud, okay? The thicker the cloud is, do you notice how some parts of the cloud is super thick and some parts of the cloud is thinner? That means that the resistance, the strength of the resistance and the support differs based on the size of the cloud. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, this was the default settings I was talking about with uh, Ichimoku. It's 9, 26, 52, and 26. Don't worry about the settings on trading view. We have found that it is effective. You don't have to change it. Right, these default settings are effective and you can continue to use them. 
Okay, um, you can see that when we change, this is the lagging span, right? When we change the, the lagging span to a higher number, which is, okay, in this example, it's 26 and we change it to 36, we can see that the lagging span here goes further from where current price is, okay? So when you change the settings in TradingView, the movements, the lines, and the indicator just moves, okay? But again, just use the default settings. That's good enough. Okay, so now that everyone has kind of a rough idea of what Ichimoku is and what some of the lines mean, we're gonna usually how we look for setups and how we trade with Ichimoku is not on its own. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard this saying, but there's actually a saying where um, I've heard this from a quite a profitable trader, and he said that traders who trade with indicators alone are traders who lose. Okay, so I mean we take that into keep that in our minds and into consideration, we shouldn't just be using Ichimoku on its own or any other indicator on its own. In the best way actually is to be combining indicators with, with other things, with other strategies. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to combine Ichimoku with trend lines and fit levels and later uh, maybe some more resistance. So if the, the cloud is thin, does that indicate a reversal? Uh, okay, let me just go back to the Ichimoku photo. Okay, no, when the cloud is not is when the cloud is thin, it does not necessarily indicate a reversal. It just means that the support in this area where the cloud is thin is weaker than the support in this area where the cloud is thick. Do you get what I mean? It means that if price were to get here, right? Price were to get here it would be easier for price to break and in this area than it would be if it was in this area. Okay, so, um, okay, one analogy that I like to use is this, okay, you pretend, okay, let's just pretend this guy's name is Bob, okay, so Bob is pushing a ball. Okay, so Bob is pushing the ball to the right. He's pushing the ball to the right. Every time you reach a support and resistance, we're gonna pretend that that support and resistance is a door, okay? So if Bob is not a strong person and he's trying to push this heavy door, chances are he's not going to be able to push the door because the, there's so much barrier with the door, right? So chances are he's gonna have to turn back. He's gonna give up and he's gonna turn back. But if Bob reaches this door and he realizes that this door is light. It's it's made out of, I don't know, very light wood or plastic. He's gonna push this door and he can continue into the next room. So it's similar to charting or like the charts when we think about support and resistance, okay? If the support is strong or thick, then price will have a harder time. I'm not saying that price will be impossible for price to break strong support and resistance. It's similar, it's, I'm not saying Bob can never get into the other room, but I'm just saying that if the door is heavy, he will have a harder time getting to the other room. Okay, so if the support or resistance is thick or strong, price will have a harder time breaking that support and resistance. So uh, no. A thin cloud does not necessarily mean that price is going to reverse. It just means that when, actually it means that when price gets here, it will not have so much barrier and a hard time breaking and chances of it going to the other side is higher than if it was a thicker cloud. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, uh, again, if, Oh, actually, now that we're on this analogy, let me uh, continue to explain. So now that Bob is at this door, right? Okay, when we combine our strategies with other indicators, right? Let me move on. Okay, combining Ichimoku with trendline and fibs, right? Again, Bob trying here. He's trying to he's trying to push this door. He's trying to push this door. The door alone is the support and resistance. If we have trend lines lining up in the same area, it just represents a 10 kilo 
10 kilo uh, rock, for example. If we have fib levels lining up in the same area, it's another 10 kilo rock. So it just gives even more barrier and it will be even harder for Bob to get to the other side and therefore he would need to reverse. Similarly with price, if the support or resistance is combined with other things like trend line, fit levels indicated at the exact same area, chances of price breaking through to the other side will be hard. Okay, so let's put that um, theory into, let's find, let, let me show you an example of that theory. Okay, uh, do you guys see how price in this example, right? Price is just moving, it's moving, it's moving, and now it's at an Ichimoku resistance, okay? It's trying to break the cloud, right? It's trying to break the cloud, uh, but we don't know if it's gonna break yet. We just know that it is at an Ichimoku resistance. That means that price is at a door, okay? It's at a door. Okay, so Bob is at a door right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is see if there are other things lining up at that door. Okay, in this case, we have found that there is a descending trend line lining up near to this area. Okay, so this is called a confluence. Confluence meaning that there are a lot of things lining up in one area. Okay, so we've got this descending trend line. Now we have this descending trend line. We have this uh, Ichimoku resistance. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, now we also have the Fibonacci retracement, the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement lining up in this area. So we've got three things at this current point of time lining up in the exact same area. On Well, not exact, but close to each other. So my question is, do you think price will be will have an easy or hard time breaking through and going to the other side? Or do you think it's more likely that price is going to reverse from here? Can you guys let me know in the chat box so I know if you guys are still following? Exactly. Yes. Okay, cool. Everyone, I I must everyone's still following. It's unpredictable, <laughs> yes, but based on probability based on probability, right? Because trading is just a probability game, right? It, it's everything we do in trading. There's nothing about trading that's about feelings. So I feel like it's price is gonna go up. I feel like price is gonna go down. Uh, trading is all based on facts and like nothing about it. Everything about it is just factual. So when we are deciding whether price is gonna go up or go down, our only job as a trader or an analyst is to collect information or data from the charts, I mean, if you're just using purely technical analysis, right? You're using technical analysis, we, our job is to collect information on the charts and then come out with what we think is the probable results, right? The probability, it's the same as, I mean, everything you do in life is just probability, right? It's even crossing the road, there's probability of like, okay, what's the probability of me crossing from one side of the road to the other side of the road without getting hit by a car? Okay, if I look left and right, it in, my chances of getting to the other side of the road safely increases. If I use a proper pedestrian crossing, my chances of getting to the other side of the road increases. Okay, so our job as trader is just to find probable trades. And by using all these indicators, trend lines, indicators, um, Fibonacci levels, we can find the probability of where we think price is going. And that, that is where we can enter for a buy or a sell. Okay. Would you ever trade counter trend? Uh, I personally like to trade the trend. I think trend is your friend, okay? But that being said, you can also trade counter trend and still be profitable, okay? There's no one rule book written black and white anywhere on the planet saying that, okay, you must only trade the trend. Uh, you cannot go against the trend. You can still be profitable both sides right but i personally as a trader i prefer going with the trend because i feel like trend will help me get to my take profit okay so based on which time frame uh you can use ichimoku on all time frames okay okay so since majority of you said uh some of you said that it might break right <laughs> uh majority of you said that 
price will have a hard time breaking because there is so much barrier here. Let's see what actually happens. Okay, this is an example that we actually got from the charts. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways, what happened was from here, price actually reverses, right? Um, let me get my eraser. Okay, so although it's not in the next slide, but what happens was price came here and actually reversed because there was so much resistance. We not only have the Ichimoku uh, resistance lining up there, we have the descending trend line lining up there, we have the 38.2 Fibonacci retracement lining up there. So there was three reasons for us to believe price was going to reverse here and true enough, it did. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, also we had the stochastics. We have the stochastics as well. Another indicators which was saying that there might be a reversal from this area. Okay. Sorry that it does show. Okay. And true enough, it does reverses from here. Okay. So based on probability and based on from all the information and data we have collected, we have more reason to believe price was going to reverse from here than, than to believe that price was going to break from here, okay? So um, when it comes to trading, I think that will you be, what will be your stochastic setting? Okay, uh, stochastic setting, we usually use 21, five and three because we have found through back testing that this is the most effective settings, okay? on most charts and most time frame. But that being said, you shouldn't be too stringent or like too strict on the exact settings you should be using. And do you know what I mean? Like you should be using the settings that is effective to the time frame and the charts and the instrument that you're looking at. Okay, so I'll give an example. Um, like just because using 21, five and three on the stochastic works really well on XAU USD on the four hour time frame. It doesn't mean that same settings is going to work well on um, like UK oil or something. It's not going to work the same on DJI. Okay, so you just need to use the settings that is effective on the time frame and the pairs that you are looking at. Okay, for in this case, on a general on generally we use 21, five and three, but if I find that it is not effective, I will just tweak it a little. Okay, I will tweak it to either the default settings or 21, five and three, okay? Mm, it's good to follow a set of rules in trading, but you need to be a little bit more flexible as well. Okay. So there's two ways to use Ichimoku. How do we choose the combinations of indicators to use in trading? Um, so what I can suggest is you learn as many indicators as you can and see what works best for you. Personally, I like to use Ichimoku, Stochastics, RSI, and MACD. Sometimes I use Bollinger Bands, right? But ultimately you need to know the strategy that you are using. Right, the, the strategy, I, I'm not sure because there's so many, I'm not sure what strategies you are using, okay? But personally, the strategy that I use, I like to combine it with these few indicators that I'm saying because there's so many strategies out there on the plan. There's no one strategy that is making everyone profitable, okay? Like different traders will have different strategies and they, they might all still be profitable, okay? So that's the on the chart shows. What does it mean? Uh, no, the strategy that we use 21, 5, and 3. So let me just write that down, 21, 5, and 3. Oh, look, there's Desmond's face as well. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the topic for a while. And I'll, I'll come and answer your questions in a bit. Okay, so when it comes to Ichimoku, there's two ways that we use it. One is the continuation. We use Ichimoku for continuations and we use it for reversals. Okay, so I'll show you guys how to use um, reversals first or bounces, okay? So the first thing we want to ask ourselves is, is Ichimoku, is price respecting Ichimoku? 
I don't know if those who are here, if you guys want to take a photo or you want to write this checklist down, I do think that this is a really good checklist to use. I personally have a checklist as well when I trade that I go back and refer to. So if you guys want to take a photo or like just jot this down somewhere, uh, please go ahead. No, I'm just going to go through. Okay, so we're going to see if is price respecting Ichimoku. That's the first thing we want to uh, look out for when we're using Ichimoku. The other thing is price respecting any trend lines. Is there any key horizontal support and resistance level? Is there, is it near any key Fibonacci levels? Um, like such as Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci extension, Fibonacci projection, Fibonacci expect or Fibonacci expansions. Okay. And where is the next key level it might go to? Because we're going to use that for our take profit zone. Okay. So we can use horizontal levels as key targets and fine tune with Fibonacci. Okay, I'm not sure how many beginners are in this webinar, but if you are still confused, don't worry. I'm gonna go, I will go, I will explain this in detail so that you guys are not too lost. Okay, um, I'm not sure about you guys, but when I just started learning how to trade or chart or technical analysis, it was really not that easy. So for the new ones here, don't worry, we can go through this together. Okay, so way back to our checklist, the first question, the first question that we were supposed to ask ourselves is, is price respecting Ichimoku? Okay, so when we say respecting Ichimoku, uh, the first question we want to ask, where is price? Is it above Ichimoku or below Ichimoku? Can you guys let me know in the chat box so I know if you guys are still following? Does price look like it's above Ichimoku or below Ichimoku to you guys? Okay, cool. Guys are still following. That's the most important. Thanks, Desiree. <laughs> Thanks, Zaimu. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, Ahmed. Okay, so the first question was, is price respecting Ichimoku? Yes, it is expecting respecting Ichimoku. It is below Ichimoku at its current point of time. So again, back to what I said earlier on, if price is below the Ichimoku cloud, it means that price is bearish. If price, price is above the Ichimoku cloud, it means that price is bullish. Okay, so in this case, because price is below the Ichimoku cloud, we are expecting price to be bearish or moving in a downtrend. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is, is price respecting any trend lines? So in this example, we can see price moving nicely below an descending trend line. So we've got price moving below the Ichimoku cloud, we've got price moving below the descending uh, trend line. Uh, this looks pretty bearish to me right now, okay? The next thing we're gonna ask is, is there any key horizontal support and resistance, okay? Horizontal support and resistance are, you know, horizontal, it has to be like straight this way. So in this case, we've got a horizontal pullback resistance here. Can you see this where the uh, cell entry is? It's lining up exactly where the descending trend line is. It's lining up exactly where the resistance of the Ichimoku is. Okay, the next thing we want to ask ourselves is, is there any Ichi, uh, sorry, Fibonacci levels that is near? Okay, so in this case, we've got the 23.6 lining up with the horizontal levels and everything else, okay? And we also have the 38.2 lining up there. Okay, it, so what does this example show you? Uh, if anything, I'm gonna have to say that this example is where all the stars line, okay? This is like one of those really, really amazing traits that if you can find, you're probably gonna be profitable, okay? Because it's very, there's just so, many reasons for you to believe that the sell is going to happen from here, right? Because there's so many things lining up there that is telling you that, hey, this is a, there is a lot of barriers or there's a lot of resistance in this area and therefore you can consider to get in for a sell from here, okay? Okay, so once we have identified all those things that we have talked about, which is uh, Ichimoku, trend line, support resistance, Fibonacci levels. Now we're going to look for our probable take profit area. Okay, so our probable take profit area will usually be the next zone. So when I say the next zone, it's usually the next horizontal 
support and resistance level, okay? And we fine tune that with Fibonacci levels, okay? So horizontal um, support resistance, this is more for the new people here, the new, like the beginners here. Horizontal support resistance, the easiest way to find this is to look for swing highs and swing lows, okay? So can you see that there is a, in this example, there is a swing high right here, there is a swing low right here, there's a swing low right here. That's the easiest way to spot these, okay? This, again, more for the new people, okay? Uh, so that there's, because there's a swing high here, we're, we're gonna put our take profit level here at this swing high level. This will be called a horizontal pullback support. Uh, this is where we expect price to go to. Why do we expect price to go there? It's because price is very attracted, always attracted to key levels, okay? Horizontal supply and resistance are usually the key levels. So how far down would you place the sell inside the channel? Oh, yes, the take profit. Uh, the one place you can put, um, I know in this example, the take profit looks like it's very near or short, right? Whereas the channel actually has so much downwards potential. Why are we only putting our take profit there? Because on a very conservative level, right? We're just trying to secure, when we're just trying to secure profit, this is more for scalpers, okay? Especially for scalpers. Uh, when we're just trying to secure some profit, we just put our take profit here in this level, but it doesn't only have to be in this level. You can also put it in the next level. There's so many levels. There's one more level here. There's one more level here, okay? Uh, but on the minimal, just being very, very conservative, you can put your take profit here, okay? Uh, yes, and just nice, everything would still line up nicely with our descending channel, which means that there is bearish momentum to push your price down to your take profit area, okay? Is everyone good for now? Everyone good? I am going to move on to the next example. If we finish all the examples in the next, uh, quickly, we can go into the live charts and hopefully see uh, if that worked out nicely recently. If we can apply this strategy, we can find an example of this strategy in the recent times. Okay, so this is another one. We've got a descending channel. Oh yes, by the way, guys, uh, you see this link here. I don't want to go into the link because we only have like like 18 minutes left. I don't think we have a lot of time left. Right? I probably won't be able to finish if we go through this link. Okay, you guys can go into this link. Okay, this, this setup here is actually recorded. Okay, you can go into this link and you can watch a video of this setup and how uh, Desmond caught this, okay? So this is another, exa another example. We've got a descending channel, which lines up price was at the descending channel resistance. It lined up nicely with a few Fibonacci levels, which is 100, probably the 161.8 Fibonacci extension. Able to, um, I think best, I can't post the, I can post the link in the chat at the end of the webinar, right? Because this slides, you know, it's a, it's a picture. So I can't really copy and paste until I exit and go into um, the slides, okay? Um, but I think best if you just take a photo for now. How indicators are support? to price action trading in supply and demand zone where smart money investors are trying to track the traders. Okay, yes, that is a very tricky one. Uh, yes, there are a lot of institutional traders out there trying to track traders, trying to like uh, stop hunts and stuff. So um, I think the solution to that is actually, especially when it comes to like stop loss at least, right? We can try to give our stop loss bigger breeding states. I know what you're saying, uh, Narendra, right? Uh, that's very tricky because this is, I think it's something that is out of our control too. But the one thing we can do as retail traders is to maybe give our stop loss a bit more breeding space so that we don't get trapped in all these stop hunts and stuff. Okay, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go into the next example. We can see 
two Fibonacci levels, the 161.8 Fibonacci extension and the 50% Fibonacci retracement lining up nicely with the descending channel. Okay, um, this is called a confluence and this is where we can consider to play the continuation with Ichimoku, okay? Okay, the next example we're gonna go through is playing breakouts with Ichimoku. It is the same as the continuation. I mean, when it comes to the checklist, not, not exactly the same, but similar, okay? But the difference is the first thing one asks also, did price cross below or above the Ichimoku recently, okay? So for those who want to take a picture of this checklist, I strongly recommend you guys to take a picture or maybe like drop this down somewhere or yeah, you can just review this later. Okay, so we're gonna, when we're looking for breakouts with Ichimoku, we're gonna ask the price cross below or above the Ichimoku. Do we have the Ichimoku momentum on our side? Did price break any trend lines? Did price break a recent key horizontal level? Did price break a recent, um, Fibonacci levels, and we're going to use the same technique that we did in the last when looking for continuation trades, right? Okay, we're going to look for zones and horizontal levels, and we're going to fine tune it with Fibonacci to find our take profit area. Okay, so this is an example of playing the breakout. Do you guys notice how price recently broke the Ichimoku cloud here to the upside, okay? So that was already our first sign of a possible, uh, it could be a possible trend reversal. It could be a, just, a, just an indication of where trend is. So with price breaking the Ichimoku cloud to the upside, we kind of already have some kind of bias that price is a little bit bullish, okay? There is momentum that is pushing price upwards. Okay, so that's the first thing that we notice with Ichimoku. Okay, the second thing uh, we want to ask if, is, is Ichimoku mo momentum on our side? So we can see price shooting up here. Okay, we can safely conclude that there is bullish momentum. The next thing we're going to ask is, is there any trend line that has recently, was recently broken? Okay, so in this example, we can see uh, there wasn't really a trend line that was using broken. I'm just going to roughly draw one trend line here, okay? So there was a trend line that broke here, okay, which is already another indication that there is bullish momentum. So bullish momentum here, we've got bullish momentum here when price broke the Ichimoku. The second thing we're going to ask, did price recently break any horizontal levels? We can see that in this example, price actually broke this swing high here. All the swing highs. So it broke, which is further confirming that there is definitely bullish pressure or bullish momentum. Okay, so we've got like just so much so much reason to believe that it's bullish right now. That means when we think it's bullish, we should be entering for a buy entry. We should be looking out for a buy entry, right? Because ultimately we want to try to play the trend because trend is different. Okay, uh, the next thing you want to ask is did it, did it break any uh, Fibonacci levels? For this example, there was no uh, Fibonacci levels, you could probably have plotted a Fibonacci projection here. Uh, maybe a, something would have lined up here, 61.8, okay, and that would have been broken as well. Okay, so this would have given us a lot of reason for uh, believing that there was bullish momentum, right? Believing there was bullish momentum and we could have considered to get in here for a buy. Okay, so if we were really to get in here for a buy, oh, sorry, an example, you can see that the 61.8 was lined up much higher, a little bit more higher than uh, those swing highs. So we we're not going to consider that. It's totally fine. Okay, uh, we enter here for a buy and true enough, price really does go up to this level, which is where we would have put our take profit 
two, how to set take profit for breakout out. Oh, yes, cool. Um, oh, cool. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, again, how we find take profit levels is we look for the next zone. So when I say the next zone, it's the next horizontal support and resistance backed with Fibonacci levels. Okay, so next, at the very minimal, it should at least be horizontal support and resistance, right? This is at the very minimal. To back it up with Fibonacci levels would be even better. At least then you will know the strength of your take profit area, the likelihood of price going to your take profit area. Okay, so in this case, we were using this swing high as our take profit. We would have been using this swing high as our take profit area and true enough price went up there. Okay. This is an, another example of using Ichimoku to, to find uh, breakout trades. So we can see price breaking the Ichimoku cloud here. We can see price breaking the ascending trend line here. Okay, which is further confirming that there is bearish momentum. Okay, and um, we are going to put, and we can also see price breaking this horizontal level here. Okay, so there's three reasons to believe why price is going to go down from here because he has broken so many barriers. Again, back to my uh, ball example earlier on. back to my ball example earlier on, just because uh, a door is heavy, it doesn't mean Bob, it'll be impossible for Bob to push the door and go to the other room. Okay, it just means it's harder for him. But if Bob successfully manages to push the door and go to the other room, it just means that chances, that momentum that Bob has is very strong. So in this case, bearish momentum is very strong because it managed to break so many uh, barriers, okay? So because we think that the bearish momentum is strong, we will naturally enter here for a sell, okay? And our take profit area, again, will be the next zone, the next zone being the next swing low here. We're gonna use this as a reference and you can see true enough price really does get to our take profit area, okay? Uh, this is another one of those links. You can go and watch this here. This is how we use Ichimoku to look for breakout trades as well. Price was below the Ichimoku crowd. It broke the Ichimoku cloud to the downside. It also broke the 38.2. It also broke the horizontal level here. And naturally, we would think that price was going down. Okay, and true enough, it does go down. Okay, another one of the breakout ones, price broke the Ichimoku cloud here. Um, we are expecting price to break this horizontal swing low here to further confirm the bearish momentum because it, it recently broke the ascending trend line as well. So you can see how price broke a lot of things, which is confirming the bearish or bullish momentum, then naturally we will enter here. We will want to enter here for a sell once it breaks this area. Okay, so in this case, it broke. It broke this area. You would be able to enter here for a sell or the other way you can do is wait for the pullback and then you can continue to enter for the sell. Okay, another example here. You can see price breaking. Oh, sorry, I've got a question. Because already they found there's a break of structure and the price goes down. Yes, exactly, Narendra. Uh, this is a, a really, really good way to use Ichimoku. Okay, so another one here, you can see price breaking the Ichimoku cloud here. It broke this horizontal level here, right? It also broke um, the Fibonacci level here and you can see oh sorry we expect to see price bouncing at the 23.6 Fibonacci levels where all the breaking was happening okay so uh true enough it bounced from there sorry let me just go next slide 
it bounced from there and this would have been a really nice trade as well. Okay, we've got five more minutes left. I really want to go on the charts to show you guys how well Ichimoku works so that you won't think that all of this is theoretical, right? It actually does happen on the charts very often as well. Okay, um, if you guys have any questions, we have five more minutes. You guys can ask in the chat box. Uh, if not, I'm going to go straight into the live charts. Okay, so for the purpose of our webinar for today, right? We need to exit this slides first. So that it seems to be stuck. Oh, what's going on? Oh, okay, sorry, I have to click accept. Okay, cool. Everyone see my charts, right? Um, everyone see my charts, right? Cool. Okay. Now everyone, I think everyone see my charts now. We see you. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, for the purpose of our webinar today, we are going to pull out Ichimoku, right? Because today we're only focusing on Ichimoku. This is the live chart, okay? So this is not just examples from the past. It's nice to see examples from past, but it's better to be able to apply it. So the first thing you want to do, pull out the Ichimoku, we need to first, again, ask ourselves, where is price? Where is price? So in this case, price is above Ichimoku. This is price is above the Ichimoku cloud, which is indicating bullish or bearish. Can you guys let me know in the chat box so I know you guys are still following me? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Cool. Thanks, uh, Chan. Thanks, RR. Thanks, Michael, Liam, Derek. Okay. It's indicating bull. Okay. The other thing that makes me think that it's bullish, it's also because the conversion line is above the baseline. Do you see that? The conversion line is above the baseline, which is also indicating bullishness. Thanks, Clint. Okay. So the next thing we want to do based on our checklist just now, which I hope you guys jot down or took a photo or something, is we, are, we want to know where the position of price is. The second thing we want to know is where are the horizontal levels. So in this case, I do see that there is a horizontal swing high here. So because based on Ichimoku, we're a bit biased that it's bullish. Like naturally, naturally we want to look for a buy entry, right? Okay, so to confirm our buy entry, we need to wait for the break of this horizontal support resistance here, right? There's a horizontal resistance here. We want to wait for the break of that. So if price breaks here, we now have two reasons to believe that price is bullish. Number one is because, sorry, we've got three reasons. Number one is because price is above the Ichimoku cloud. Number two, <clears throat> sorry, is because the conversion line is above the baseline. And number three, it's because price broke the horizontal level, which is confirming or supporting our argument of the buy. Okay? Are we Gucci? So that's three reasons. Uh, in this case, I probably wouldn't be able to find any fib levels. Let me try to see. Probably based on the structures of this chart, definitely wouldn't be able to It'll be too far. Yeah, it's too far away. If price is too, if the Fibonacci levels is too far from your horizontal supply resistance, we shouldn't take that into consideration, okay? Because it's too far. It's not giving us, it's not relevant to our analysis. So we shouldn't use this. Will the recording on this webinar be recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Um, will be uploaded. It is recorded. Let me check and then I will come back to you. Okay, let me check and I'll come back to you. Okay, so in this case, we've got just based on Ichimoku and horizontal levels alone, we're a bit biased of uh, bullishness and looking for a buy, but we need to confirm with this. I'm trying to see if there is any ascending trend line. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's any ascending trend line. If anything, there was an ascending trend line here. Not the best because it's so steep, right? This is so steep. There was a break of that ascending trend line. Uh, 
which could have indicated a bit of bearishness, okay, a bit of bearish pressure, right? Uh, but I don't think you should worry about too, this too much. In this case, in this example, USDJPY on the followers, it just means that the stars are not aligning as well as on the other examples that we're looking at. Okay, so in this case, the things that are, are aligning is that price is at a resistance right now. We're waiting for the break of this resistance to confirm the buy. Okay, um, and it is above the Ichi Moku cloud and the conversion line is above the baseline. Okay, setting the take profit and the stop loss. So in this case, I did say that you should be looking for horizontal support resistance for your take profit. But in this case, there are no horizontal resistance that are nearby. I probably have to like scroll back really far into the past to find it or maybe go to the daily time frame to find it. Even the daily time frame doesn't have it. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to use Fibonacci confluence instead to find our take profit. Okay, so we've got the 161, 127.2 Fibonacci retracement. That, that is a level that price usually goes to. It goes to fairly often. Another thing that we want to look at is the 61.8, which is the one that uh, was near. Let me see if, nope. Okay, so I wouldn't say this is a good take profit area. Why? Because we want to find Fibonacci confluence area. That means we want we want Fibonacci levels lining up in the exact area or at least close to each other. In this case, mm, it's kind of like, wonder, like there's quite a distance. So like we can't really pinpoint a nice and clean take profit for this chart, the USD JPY. But yes, let's assume, okay, let's assume, let's assume that everything was lining up nicely, that the 61.8 was lining up nicely with the 127.2, okay, in this area. Lining up nicely or at least close to it. I would immediately say that this would be a good take profit area, okay? But in this case, it's not that nice because it's a bit, there's a bit of distance, okay? So, um, I'm just showing this to you guys to show you guys how we usually look for take profit areas. But in this example, it's not that nice. Okay. Will the recording of the webinar be available? Okay, just stay on the line. I know we are past time already, but let me just double check and I will. I don't want to give you guys the wrong info. Okay, um, but yes, that's how we use Ichimoku. In this case, everything everything didn't align that great, right? I would have much preferred if like, uh, let me see, there was so, it so happened to have a ascending channel, right? It so happened to have an ascending channel that was signing up. This is not a proper ascending channel, by the way. Oh wait, actually it could be a, a good ascending channel because Ascending channels require two touches at the bottom and two on top. Uh, in this case, although there are two at the bottom and two on top, we can see that it's it's not that significant. The touches was very like close to each other. It's not that significant. It's not that obvious. Okay, I would much prefer more things lining up, and I would say this was a good trick. But in this case, we've only got two things. Um, Hey, Antonio and Michael, I can't really give you guys the most accurate answer for now. So what you can do is, I it is recorded. I'm just not 100% sure that it will be uploaded, right? Uh, or I mean, if it is recorded, it will be definitely uploaded somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure where it'll be uploaded to. So your best uh, next action you can do from now, the next move you can do from now is to email um, take mail and to ask for the recording, okay? Okay, uh, that's all I have for you guys. That's all I have for you guys. I will catch, I will catch you guys again soon. Can I ask you for more information? Can I get in touch with you for more information? Yes. 
Let me see how you can get in touch with me. Thank you, Bob. Okay, some of you know me as Bob. That is... Maybe... Do you use what are the settings? Stochastics, again, settings 21, 5, and 3. Okay, that's all I have for you. But um, sorry, Antonio, I, I'm not sure where I can pass you. Probably my Instagram, right? You can probably contact me on Instagram so I can guide you to the correct place once I find out. Okay, so my Instagram is chess, J A C Q U E T. Okay, you can probably just go look for me there and I will. I actually don't have LinkedIn. I should really work on getting my LinkedIn. It's super trend in the day. Um, I did, I did, I share with everyone. Did I not share with everyone? I'm posting in the chat, everyone. Okay, there you go. Okay. Has scheduled with Desmond. Thanks, Has the session continue as scheduled with Desmond? Uh, I'm, I think Desmond will be taking you guys next week. Right? We should be alternating. Okay. Uh, Desiree is saying that they will upload it to YouTube. Take mail. They might. Okay. So thanks everyone for attending. I will see you guys again uh, probably next week or the week after. Okay. Bye.